we have gone over multiple times how to defend yourself if somebody's trying to take you down. So let's kind of switch the roles a little bit. What do we do if we're in a position to take a person down? How do we properly control the back? How do we take them down that not only gets them down safely to an extent where we're not doing severe damage to this person, but also keeps you and yourself safe from not only damage from falling, but also preventing this person to actually be able to turn the tables and come right back at you. So let's check it out. I want to make sure that I'm controlling the hips, keeping his hips sucked in and nice and tight to me so that he does not, again, have the freedom to move his hips. And as always, when it comes to grappling, the ability to control the person's hips is what's going to win you the fight. So there's a couple things, though, to keep in mind with how you control this person's hips in regards to your grip that is either going to make or break your takedowns before they even start. So if I'm grabbing this person with my hands essentially right around their belly button, even if I'm doing a gable grip, I've got the hips sucked in nice and tight. My chest is up to their back. My head is tucked to protect my head from him trying to throw elbows or hook my head. I've got everything that I'm doing right. The problem is, is my hand placement. Even though I have a nice strong grip, because I'm directly in front of him, if he starts trying to hand fight and break these grips down and he starts pushing his hips away from me and walking away, eventually he's going to probably be able to break this grip free. So my best option if I do end up here is to switch my hands to one side. It doesn't matter which side. But I want to switch them to the opposite side that I'm on and again just kind of shuffle your body to the far side. If you can get a grip off on the side right away that's fine but now because I have the grip here there's nothing in front that he can try and fight. He can push down on my elbow my forearm over here as much as he can it's not going to do anything and if he does try and fight the grips over here it's in such an awkward position that he's going to have to try and turn his upper body to do it. Either way it's not going to work for him. So in regards to grip get your grip on the side. Now even better is if I am able, as we went over a few weeks ago, if I'm able to get the two-on-one grip control, the cross grip, whether I trap, even if I trap over the arm, that's fine. If I can lock down one of his arms, beautiful. But otherwise, get this hip grip. Again, I want my head and my chest to his back and suck his hips into me. Depending on how I'm going for the takedown, I'm either going to have my hips nice and close to his hips, or I'm going to kind of off-branch my hips a little bit, give that some distance, and again, the gravity here is going to kind of suck his hips down and into me a little bit more, which again makes it harder for him to try and escape and stand up because now his level is already starting to change, which means that his weight is now in my control. So those are simply just kind of the basics on how we want to have a grip. So now let's kind of go over a few takedowns. If you're expecting suplexes and all that shit, tune out, different channel, we're not doing that stuff here. Your first option in this situation, he's not going to sit here with his arms filling out. He's probably going to be trying to break this grip. So it's going to give you the opportunity to trap this arm. And all I'm doing is I'm literally just going to start pressuring forward, but again, off at an angle a little bit. If I'm just walking straight on, he's just going to kind of shuffle his feet. He can also post his foot out. And as he posts that foot, he's going to start pushing back into him. It makes it difficult for me to be able to take him down in that sense. So instead of me just kind of coming straight out, I'm going to come off a little bit at an angle and again, drop my weight at the same time. So we're in this position, come off at this angle, and I'm just driving forward with this person again, pulling all that pressure. Now, the next thing to keep in mind when you do take a person down, ideally I want this person to land either on their side or completely on their stomach because this prevents their ability to start using their arms and their legs. If this person lands on their back and I either come down in side control or I start coming down on knee and belly and this person does have ground experience, I'm going to probably find myself in a lot of trouble trying to come down and control this person as he's framing, posting, and working his way out. So your best bet, find takedowns in positions that allow you to land in these positions. Now in this exact position, his arm is already trapped. If I'm still holding on to the arm, that's great. If I still have the grip, that's great. But he only has one arm, and trust me, as hard as he wants to push off with that arm to try and stand back up, he's not going to be able to push off his outside arm. He's going to need control of this arm, which again is trapped under him. So this position works great for me. I have the ability to take the back. I have the ability to take side control. I can easily switch my grip to seatbelt grip. If we need to, I can start working on taking the person's back. Again, if you're more law enforcement, I can work this cross grip here a little bit start working the grip to the back, start hipping into the person, and now we get ourselves to a nice cuffing position. So number two, same type of grip. At this point, it doesn't matter if I get this cross arm or not. Even if they do try and post to the ground because of the nature and how we're taking them down, the posting isn't going to do too much in that sense. So in this situation, I still have the cross grip. My far leg is going to step in front of him a little bit because, again, at this point, I'm still going to be about, kind of behind them. So I'm going to step in front. My back leg is going to do a sweeping motion for the far leg. Now, I'm not looking to literally sweep his leg. I'm doing the sweeping motion at the same time that I'm pulling his hips down so that when he naturally steps back with that far foot, instead of him stepping back, he's going to be tripping over my foot, which again is going to drop his hip. I step, I sweep, and drop my weight. 
so another option from this position, once again, if I feel like this person is starting to try and run away a little bit, they're trying to you know, walk away from me and get forward, that's fine. Instead of me using my energy to pull this person back, I'm going to allow him to continue walking forward, take my outside leg. I'm simply looking to just step in front. And as I step in front here, again, I'm just going to continue driving my motion forward. And again, we take this person straight down. The beauty of this position is I have full control of his legs and full control of his hips. From here, I can either continue to just climb up the body, lock down the grips, and we get into a back mount position. Or initially from here, I can work my legs back to the outside, and we come here with a knee on back. We have full side and back control again from here. So either way, it gives you a good position. Person, again, is in another good fall. They fall on their stomach, their hands are trapped. It's a good way for me to take control from there. If you find yourself with a real strong guy that is great at posting and keeping their balance, anytime I try and drive this way, they post out with their foot. If I try and step this way, he back steps and he's posting. If I'm trying to drive forward, he's pushing back into me. Whichever way I go, they keep kind of post. So you do have another option. It's simply just kicking out the knee. Now, it's not going to break the leg or anything. It simply just buckles your weight. Ideally, I want to go for the far leg more so than the close one. And as I do this, I'm literally just going to kick through the knee. And as I do this, again, I'm ripping down on his hips at the same time. So we're in this position. I kick and pull. And again, I'm ripping this person down. As always, the key, maintain a nice tight grip around the race, around the waist, suck that person in, drive them straight to the ground all at the same time. And again, we land in a good ground position. So as always, self-defense is nothing if you don't know how to chain all these positions together. So again, when you're in these positions, run to clinch position, there isn't one takedown that's better than another. It all depends on how this person's reacting. So if we ended up here, I shift my weight here. If he starts fiddling around and playing with my hands over here, perfect. Trap the arm and we start taking the person down this way. But let's say he gets a real good post on his foot and he starts pushing back into me the other way, fine. Now I'm going to step, switch, and touch the person and pull down that way. But if that's the situation and now he is able to resist that and he starts going forward again, well then now I can switch it, hook the leg, and we go forward. So it's this understanding of how we can kind of chain all this stuff together. So if we're doing it in a live scenario, I trap the arm, he goes ahead and, and come here, he pose, then I switch, and I pull the person straight back. So again, your ability to chain those moves one to one to one and stay a step ahead of him is what's going to allow you to successfully take the person down. So the ability to take a person's back is only as useful as your ability to take the person down to the ground. If you don't know how to take someone down from back control, then there's really no reason for you to control a person from that position anyway. And once again, if you do know how to take somebody down, understand the different options that you have, obviously depending on how the person reacts. So learn how to chain stuff together, learn how to properly take the person down, and ensure that you know how to control the person once we land on the ground. So give them a shot, let us know what you think. We'll see you next time.